My name is Aditya Gupta and I am enjoying my summer vacation between 5th and 6th grade and I love to play Minecraft. And this is my presentation on how to make a Minecraft mod. How many people here play Minecraft? A few people. And that means for mostly you won't know. So what is Minecraft? Minecraft is a game where you can place and break blocks. You can mine to find raw materials and craft them into usable items, such as tools, weapons, and armor, which can be very useful in the gameplay because let's say you wanted to mine something, you'd have to have a pickaxe, or if you wanted to dig large amounts of dirt, you need a shovel. And then there's mobs and monsters, pretty much anything with an artificial intelligence. And then the monsters are the guys that have the artificial intelligence, or they're the bad guys trying to kill you. And then there's redstone, which is a logical on-off system that can be used to create very elaborate structures, but also very simple ones. So, what is a mod? Well, a mod, they add, remove, or change features of the game, and they can be very small, like making mobs slower, to very giant, like a whole new dimension of 50 new blocks, items, and mods. And there's two types of mods. There's a client side and a server side. Now, client side is only for single player, and it'll mod your personal Minecraft, but a server side mod is for a server. It won't mod your Minecraft, but it'll mod the entire server and everybody who plays on it. So here are some examples of mods that people have made. There is single player commands, which adds new commands such as slash explode and slash spawn, which it wouldn't be there in the regular game. So let's say you have a bunch of stone and you want to blow it all up. You could use slash explode, but if you were in the normal game and you didn't have that, you have to break it block by block and that's boring. And then there's MC edit, which makes editing terrain much easier. And that's the one I'm going to demonstrate. And then there's mo creatures, which adds a whole lot of new mobs. And like these turtles on the screen. That, I like turtles, so it'd be pretty useful. So let me demonstrate this mod. So, so this is my MC Edit world, where I'm going to build a giant wall of something. So, if I was in regular Minecraft, I'd have to build it block by block, and like I said before, doing that is really boring. So here I can just um, basically set it to how long I want. Let's say I want to make it 200 blocks this way, and then 200 blocks that way. So that's 400. Then I could make it higher, and then fill it with, I'll just fill it with some block of gold. And then I save it. And from past experiences, I know to save it again, just in case. And then I'll close this, log on to Minecraft. And here I have the world I built. Sometimes it takes a while to load. And here I have this giant wall of gold. And nobody likes to build stuff block by block, so, and even if I tried to build this one block at a time, it would take me probably an entire day to do it. So that's that lot. So back to the presentation. What do you need to make a mod? First of all, you're going to need Maven to create the mod template or all the files you're going to use for the mod. Then you will need NetBeans or any other IDE to edit your code and the files you created. Then you will need Java to run Minecraft. Bucket to run the servers and get the API for the mods. And finally, Minecraft to test the mods. So here are the steps to make a mod. Since you all know a lot more about Java than I do, you're going to have all these programs installed, I bet. So like, the first step is to download the programs, which is like Maven, Java, the IDE, and everything else. Step two is to create a sample plugin, just so you get the hang of it. Step three is to download and start the server. And step four is to start modding it with the bucket API. Now here's the structure of a plugin I made, and I think it'd be better if I just showed it to you in the actual thing. I 
think it's starting to open now. Do you think I'll just show it in the presentation? Or not, I guess. So, wait, So, here's a plugin I made called Money Plugin, which adds like money and shops to the normal game. And those aren't there in the normal game. So, the first file I'm going to talk about, um, let me open the rest of these first. So the first file I'm going to talk about is moneyplugin.java, which is the first file that gets invoked when you enable or disable the plugin and tells exactly what will happen when either of those two actions is what happens. Then there's moneylistener.java, which is really where the action happens. So if I wanted to make it so that if I left click on a sign, it'll give me $5, I'd have to add it in here. So everything that goes on in-game happens in here. Next is plugin.yaml, which is basically the configuration file, and it has all the basics such as the author's name, the plugin's name, and a few others. Then there's pom.xml, which is, um, it shows the version of all the things they're using, which is Maven and Java and Bucket. So that's the, that's the structure of the plugin. Now you're going to all know this, but it was new to me, so I think I'll still go over it. The Java files I make go through the compiler and become classes, and that with the YAML configuration file become the jar, which is the actual plugin. So here are some mods that I have made. There is money plugin, which adds money to the game, and it also has shops and you can buy and sell items. And I'm going to show you an example of a shop. Sorry, I don't have any internet connection, so I'll have to show it here. So this shop here, it's basically the sign is the actual shop and this is selling what it's selling or buying. So the template for the shop is the first line says if it's if you're buying or selling. So here's buy. The next line says the quantity of items. So here's buy one of some random item. Then the, the third line says the item ID number. And in this case, it's 122 or a dragon egg. So it's saying to buy one of a dragon egg. And the last line says the price. So here it's basically saying, if I left click on the sign, it'll, I can buy one of a dragon egg for $100,000. And a few other things that I did at the money plugin is that if you break a block or place a block, you also get one cent. And if you take something out of a furnace, you can get three. Another mod that I made is called random plugin because it really is random. And what it does is it gives you double the EXP when you kill a mob and bows will shoot gas fireballs, which you'd normally think that bows shoot arrows, but and gas fireballs are basically like explosive projectiles, really. So here's a sample of code that I wrote, but I think it would be better to show you what that means. So here I have this method called double exp, and this annotation here shows that it's an event handler and it can handle a certain event. The event it's going to handle is shown here called entity death event or the death of a mob. Here it's setting this variable exp with star set at zero. It's setting it to the dropped exp from the mob, and then it's basically doubling it here and setting the dropped exp to that variable, successfully doubling the exp dropped. It's next um, method here. It's also an event handler called evil bows, which happens when you shoot a bow, entity shoot bow event. And here it's making a variable called player of type player, and then it's setting it to the person who shot the arrow. And then it's sending them a message in green saying ribbit because they like frogs. And then lastly, it's getting the player, getting the world they're in, and spawning a gas fireball at their head. And with the default settings, it'll point the, to the direction that the player is pointing. <coughs> here are some references for further information. This first URL here is about the Minecraft workshop me and my dad did, where basically what we did is we invited a few of my friends to come over, and they had no programming experience at all, and we taught them the basics of Java and how to make a Minecraft mod. And then this second link is a more generic link 
about not just Minecraft modding, but other kinds of programming too. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I can send them to you, I guess. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Nobody? <laughs> um, well, it wasn't really that hard, but it still did take a, kind of a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay, then I'm done. Thanks for listening.